You are listening to The Gateway Church, located in Ferrisburg, Michigan. You can learn more about us by visiting thegateway.church or like and follow us on Facebook, where you can watch full services, keep up with all that is going on, and get connected. Today and in next week, we're going to be back into our fall series called I Vote For. In the I Vote For series, we've wrestled with this idea that the culture that we're living in it has become really ugly in a lot of ways. And we've kind of, we've spent a couple Sundays laying the foundation and just saying, man, just people are um, uh, out of control and just rude and impatient and, and just, uh, just, uh, just nasty sometimes. And I had this epiphany that that is good news for believers. The fact that people around us are so ugly we, as believers, as Christians, we should easily stand out, full of the Holy Spirit, where the spiritual fruit is manifesting itself through the refinement of our character. We should all be growing in the Lord. Can I get an amen? Amen. We've said that this is how we're going to grow this fall. We're going to work on these character traits found uh, in uh, the fruit of the Spirit. This series is on the fruit of the Spirit, and they're, they're really we're looking for fruitfulness. Everyone say fruitfulness. In the Old Testament, it talks about the concept of fruitfulness more than a hundred times. And then when you move into the New Testament, 24 out of the 27 books of the New Testament talk about what it means to be a fruit-bearing Christian. And again, we should, as we embrace these things and as our character is being refined, it should be easy for us to stand out. And our key passage is in Galatians chapter 5, and let's start in verse 22 today. It says this, but the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives. And let's say these together, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There is no law against these things. There are some people that break those nine down into three groups of three, love, joy, and peace, talking about inner character, patience, kindness, goodness, relational qualities and character, and then faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control, personal character. I like that. Verse 24 continues. It says, those who belong to Christ Jesus have nailed the passions and desires of their sinful nature to the cross and crucified them there. Since we are living by the Spirit, let us follow the Spirit's leading in every part of our lives. Let us not become conceited or provoke one another or be jealous to one another. Lord, I pray that this passage uh, will just continue to ring true. And Lord, help us to be fruitful and grow in the fruit of the Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. Church, I've got some good news and bad news. The bad news is this is that apparently producing spiritual fruit is not an option if you're a believer. The good news is there's a measure of the Holy Spirit that helps us, and we'll get there. But look at a couple of these verses. You can write these down or flip in your Bibles. Philippians chapter 1, verse 11 says this. It says, you, or may you always be filled with the fruit of your salvation, the righteous character produced in your life by Jesus Christ, for this will bring much glory and praise to God. What we're talking about this fall will bring glory to Jesus. Our lives can bring him honor. Isn't that great? Colossians 1 1 verse 10 says, then the way you live will always, everyone say always, it will always honor and please the Lord, and your lives will produce every kind of good fruit. All the while, you will grow as you learn to know God better and better. Again, we're on this pursuit to grow, to be growing in the Lord. John chapter 15, a great passage. The whole chapter talks about fruit and um, and growing and trees and all these things. Look what verse 2 says, though. He cuts off every branch of mine that does not produce fruit. 
Why would God do that? He prunes the branches that do bear fruit so that they will produce even more. We should be growing in fruit. And then little verse, uh, verse 5 of the same chapter says, yes, I am the vine. This is Jesus talking. You are the branches. Those who remain in me and I in them will produce much fruit. Church, only God can make the fruit inside of you, the character, grow. We can plant the seed. We can water it. We can fertilize it. When it starts to grow, we can stake it. We can even trim it like a gardener and uh, even weed around it and water, all these things. But let's remember that we have to remain in the vine. Unless we're, if we get disconnected from God, we will not bear fruit. But when we do stay connected, we will grow. And that's what our goal is this fall, is to grow. To grow in love, joy, peace. We've covered those so far. And today, just wait for it, is patience. And let's just lock the doors. We're going to take our time here. You guys didn't have plans the rest of the day, right? We're going to talk about patience today. And I'll tell you, I've really wrestled with this message. And uh, I kind of disclosed for service that uh, I'm not an expert when it comes to patience. And I had this realization as Pastor Bobby was... uh, you know, praying us out of first service, I thought to myself, uh, at the beginning of this message series, we said that it's not like, oh, you rate yourself, and oh, I'm a 7 out of 10 in love, and I'm a 6 out of 10 in peace or joy, and then patience, I might be a 3, uh, and then maybe I'm a 10 in self-control, that would be <laughs> really false, but, uh, but, uh, but anyway, but, I was, but if you remember, we said that it's like the lowest number, that's your number. <laughs> that's the fruit. It's not like you pick and choose and say, oh, it's an average of these. And I thought about this with patience, and my heart, I was like, oh, man, I've got a lot of room to grow. And I, I just told a couple stories uh, for service, and uh, I thought, you know, I mean, the longer I sat with this this week, I was like, more stories started coming, and and I thought, wow, I really am not qualified um, to talk about patience. And so I thought, well, I'll do an introduction and then leave it to somebody else. Whoever is patient, please come and uh, preach. Anybody at all? <laughs> Don't we all struggle with this? I was thinking about it. I bought a bike a few years ago that I just had to have. A nice bike, a road bike that was, I mean, let's just be, I'll just tell you, it was thousands of dollars. And, uh, and this summer, Ryan, I know you ride a lot. I've literally rode it one time. How many have ever had this pursuit? Like, you have to have it, and you have to have it now. That's kind of the way it was with this bike. I always sold some things, that, like anything that wasn't bolted down in my house. I was, you know, trying to figure out how to get this stupid bike. And this year, literally one time. I was not so patient. How many of you have kids uh, in the room? Let's just see. Come on. If you're proud of your kids, raise your hand. Woo, woo. All right. Uh, if you have kids, you've struggled with patience, I'm sure. If you're a spouse, if you have a spouse, let, come on, all those that are married, and we got a brand new newlywed couple in the room. We got uh, just married yesterday, and, uh, but I'll tell you, it's an opportunity to learn patience. It's just the way it is. I was thinking about it. I've got a great staff. We've got an incredible board here at the Gateway Church. Those are just people that have given me opportunities to be patient. Isn't that the truth? And quite frankly, I don't feel all that qualified to talk about it, but it's on the list, so we got to do it. Patience, and we're going to scratch the surface today. It's not the final word on this. This is something we're going to learn over time. You say, why can't we just get it figured out, put it in the, put it in the burner, and uh, be done with it? It's because all around us in our culture, patience is in short supply. The problem is as Americans, and uh, let's just... We, you and I, we together, we are in too big of a hurry 
in too many ways. And the truth is, God, He is not in a hurry at all. So the goal today is to take a step in the right direction to walk it out, and to vote for patience. And so I just want to just help me out. Let's say this together. I vote for patience. One more time with some gusto. I vote for patience. And I just tricked you because how many have ever heard you shouldn't pray for patience because God's going to give you an opportunity? When you vote for it, watch out. And we will talk about that, but let's talk about impatience first. Why are we so impatient? Impatient. We are so impatient, it gives us a clue at the beginning, uh, a little earlier in Galatians chapter 5, verse 16, it says this, so I say, let the Holy Spirit guide our lives. We love that. That should be underlined, circled in your Bible. And then it says, then you won't be doing what your sinful nature craves. The reason we're so impatient is because of our sinful nature. It's that conflict. In a perfect world, you and I would be patient, but our sinful nature gets in the way. We can have the best of intentions. We can have great ideas to be slow to anger and slow, you know, just be, just be lovely people. But sometimes our follow-through just isn't there. We end up being impatient. And there are contributing factors. I was saying first service, uh, if you, when you get married, I hate to say it, but it's opportunity for there to be stress, right? Uh, when two people come together from different backgrounds, they get married, it's just, there's, it can be stressful. I got married at 19, my wife was 20, and, uh, and I'm telling you, those first couple years were difficult. Let's just be honest. Sometimes today, this week, life can be difficult. And then we decided to procreate. We decided to have kids. Reagan came along. Logan came along. More room for stress, contributing factors to us being impatient. How many know kids know how to push every button known to mankind? I, am I right? The, the students, there's something that was just inside of you. You're just born with it. And you have the way, a beautiful way to drive your mom and dad crazy. And, I, you know, I thought, oh, I'm going to have perfect kids, you know. Uh, just, you know, and then all of a sudden I'm saying out loud, at the top of my lungs, are you kidding me right now <laughs> that something happened, right? And I understand that as when, we, when you move into grandparenthood, which someday that might happen for me, I don't know, it's a little less stressful and you don't have to be so impatient, it's because you get to send those kids home, all the grandparents say amen. <laughs> uh, wow, all right, wow. And, uh, and so I look forward to that potential at some point. Point. But contributing factors to impatient. Stress is the first one. The second one I was thinking about was anger. And literally, I was like looking things up, doing my study, doing, trying to be, you know, a good pastor. And I, this is, this is embarrassing to even say. I literally thought, well, I don't really struggle with anger all that much. And then I remember just a few years back, I got so mad, I hit the side of our wall going up our stairs and I indented I, the drywall. We never fixed it. If you ever come over, we'll show you my <laughs> indiscretion. And I thought, oh, Lord, I, I can get angry even with the best of them. And what's really hard to acknowledge is that sometimes people hang on to anger, hopefully not, but it can become a cancer to our soul. There are contributing factors to being impatient. How about entitlement? No one wants to be entitled, but sometimes we just feel like, hey, I had a reservation. What happened to my reservation, right? Or I expect this or that, or I deserve this or that, or I did my part, they should do theirs. You get a lot of I, I, I in entitlement. If you've ever said to somebody, just do your job, right? You got impatient because you feel entitled. And then the last one, contributing factor, and there's tons, we could list a bunch, but control, anytime you've tried to control something, it goes sideways, you lose control, you lose your patience, you have a short fuse, 
Let's just show, just so I'm not alone. On the road, anybody? <laughs> Come on. On the road, anybody? Thank you. In, waiting in line, anybody? Right? Waiting for a text back. Pastor Sean? Waiting for anything? There are contributing factors, but let's go back at the root issue. It's our sin nature. And the problem is we are in a hurry, but don't forget, God is not. So let's talk about patience. What is it? Is it just the ability to wait or the capacity to delay? I would say that that would be inadequate. Uh, I do like this, this version or this description. It's the capacity to accept or tolerate delay, trouble, or suffering without getting angry or upset. Pretty robust definition there. But that, and it's not incorrect, but uh, we don't want to just stay there because we want to see patience through a biblical lens. When Paul is writing the fruit of the Spirit, including patience, what was the Holy Spirit trying to say? A lot of times the word patience is described as long-suffering or being slow to anger or forbearance. And it's really describing a God type of character, patience. And it's in that line of thinking uh, that I think is more uh, appropriate or more uh, substantial for us to get our minds around. Ephesians 4, 2 says this, be patient with each other, making allowance for each other's faults. Why? Because of your love. Everyone say love. And love cannot be achieved on our own strength. We said that a couple weeks ago. We also said that love is the first one we talked about, and it would connect all the rest of the fruit of the Spirit, right? The, uh, they all come together. One pastor, uh, commentator said this, that love extends our timeline. And I just thought that it was really a great way to say, love helps us with our patience. God is patient right? Uh, Philip Keller said this, patience is the powerful capacity of selfless love to suffer long under adversity. Again, that's a more of a biblical view of what patience is. Therefore, it is not just the ability to wait, but to have a good attitude while doing it, right? And it's about seeing it through the eyes, uh, saying, okay, how can I become more like God? How can I wait without complaint for the next promotion to come along? Or my finances to turn around? Or my relationship to be healed? How can I be tolerant? I put it here, tolerance for the intolerable. In other words, have a long fuse, not short. A Christ-centered contentment an indicator of our spiritual maturity, our spiritual growth. And Lord, help us all to be growing in this area. Now, patience, just by the way, it's not just being indifferent, saying, oh, I don't care, or um, passive, you know, just, you know, whatever you know, comes or goes. No, 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 that's not patience. Or giving up on something, you're just like, well, I'm just patient, just whatever. No, 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 no. Uh, it's not that. It's more of this idea that we want to become more and more like Jesus. And in our fast-paced world, the good news is where everyone wants what they want and they want it now, patience, if we get a hold of this, will cause us to stand out in this culture. And that's good news. The Holy Spirit has an endless supply of patience for us when we need it the most. And if you're grateful for that, say amen. 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 So I want to just talk about three areas where we can vote for patience, and then we're going to wrap this up. And, uh, and I hope this is meaningful for you. The first is I, we'll vote for patience with others. Turn to your neighbor, to your family, who you're sitting by, a friend, someone across the aisle, across the sanctuary. If you're online, turn around to the people in your room. Or if you're by yourself, you're just going to have to imagine yourself 
uh, being patient with others. 1 Thessalonians 5.14 says this, be patient with everyone. Hmm. (laughs) I looked that up in a bunch of different versions, and it basically says the same thing, be patient with everyone. (laughs) Ephesians 4, 2, I mentioned that a few minutes earlier. Be patient with each other, making allowance for each other's faults because of love. The idea is that patience comes from God's love for us, and practically, we can show a level of patience or love to the world around us, and that is what we are called to do. Now, is it easy? No, but that is what we're called to do. We are called to say, all right, I'm going to vote for patience, and I'm going to be patient with those around me. The second is that we're going to vote to be patient even in trials. How many have ever had a trial or tribulation? Oh yeah, we all do. Well, James 1.12 says, God blesses those who patiently endure testing and, uh, and temptation. You say, man, that's an interesting verse. Well, look what it says after that. Afterward, they will receive the crown of life that God has promised to those who love him. Remember we said, you know, you've heard of people say, don't, oh, never pray for patience. I would disagree. I think we should pray for patience because there's a blessing that comes, a crown of life that comes. God teaches us through patience with challenges and opportunities. And when we have challenges and opportunities, we grow. So yes, we should pray for patience. This is part of the sanctification process needed to grow. We are called to always be abounding in love, which is linked to patience. So we're going to vote to be patient with others. We're going to be, and I would say with trials, it's even being patient with ourselves. And lastly, to be patient with God's plan. Remember, it's our issue. We're the ones that are in a hurry. God is not. And if we can remember that, and with God's plan, that he's got a perfect plan for each and every one of us. James chapter 5 kind of captures this. Verse 7 says this, dear, friend, or dear brothers and sisters, be patient as you wait for the Lord's return. Consider the farmers who patiently wait for the rains in the fall and in the spring. They eagerly look for the valuable harvest to ripen. You too must be patient. Take courage, for the coming of the Lord is near. Verse 9 in the middle says, Don't grumble about each other, brothers and sisters, or you'll be judged. For look, the judge is standing at the door. For examples of patience and suffering, dear brothers, look at the prophets who spoke in the name of the Lord. We give great honor to those who endure under suffering. For instance, you know about Job, a man of great endurance. And if you know his story, he had a whole lot. It was all taken away. People were saying, just curse God, and he never did. And it says here, you can see how the Lord was kind to him even to the end, for the Lord is full of tenderness and mercy. You might think that God has forgotten you or that he's turned his back on you. He hasn't. He's got a perfect plan. And we just need to be patient in his plan. I love that last little phrase. God is full of tenderness and mercy. 2 Peter chapter 3 verse 9 says, The Lord isn't really being slow about his promise. Maybe you feel like there's something that's been promised to you or something even in God's word that you're hanging on to and it hasn't happened. God's not being slow. No. He's being patient for your sake. And in this verse in particular, he's talking about giving your heart to him. He says he does not want anyone to be destroyed, but wants everyone to repent. He's long-suffering. He's slow to anger. It, it, I love when we studied uh, 1 Peter through the summer, um, we, uh, 1 and 2 Peter, we saw in these verses that, that God, he loves us so much, and he, his return may seem to be delayed, 
but it's not delayed for the sake of just taking an extra time. It's so the people we know that don't know Jesus have time to repent. Again, we're the ones who are in hurry. God is not. When it comes to patience, I like what Dick Brogdon says. He says, at the end of the day, it is depth of character, which would include patience, that helps individuals, communities, churches, and nations flourish. When we understand that God is shaping us and molding us and creating us, helping us grow, we will be a standout, and it will make a difference in and that wherever we find ourselves, the fruit of the Spirit work. It, the, the Holy Spirit says produces this kind of fruit. Love, joy, peace, and say it with me, patience. But we must be willing to participate with the Holy Spirit, to listen and then act and oftentimes not act like the way we want to act. And I was thinking, how do we apply this? How do we get a chance to do that? And the reality is there will be opportunities today, probably before you leave the parking lot, for you to model patience. There will be opportunities wherever you work this week or in your school or on your sports team or as you talk with friends or as you're hanging out with your spouse or if you're single and a hermit and listening online, uh, you've got to be patient even with yourself while you've uh, experienced trials and tribulations. Applications are immediate when we talk about being patient, patient with ourselves, patient with others, patient with God and his plan for our, lo- for our lives. And I was thinking, man, when we think about this and the, the goal in front of us, it seems so hard. It, it can be frustrating. And you may ask the question, how long does it take to develop the fruit of the Spirit? Well, it takes a lifetime, a lifelong pursuit and process. It's not something that just happens overnight. We all fall short. We all fall out of step with the Spirit at one point or another. But the Spirit is faithful. He's merciful. And if God can be patient with us and just flood us with his patience, his love, we can be patient with ourselves, with others, and with God. Let's pray. And team, if you'd come to help us close out the service. Lord, I just pray that the truth of your word, we've hit a lot of scriptures today, would just ring true. And Lord, no matter how we would view ourselves in regards to the fruit of the Spirit, I pray that we would be growing. Help us to take a real, honest view and sharpen us. Help us to grow. And in regards to patience, Lord, I pray that we would slow down, that our fuse would be extended, that we would model more of your character, Lord, in our families, in this community, in this church. Lord, help us. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. As we bring this, this service to a close, there's two more verses that I want to read. The first one, 2 Peter 3.15, it says, And remember, our Lord, He's patient. He, our Lord's patience gives people time to be saved. This is what our beloved Paul also wrote to you with the wisdom God gave him. And then Romans 4, 2, 4 says, Don't you see how wonderfully kind, tolerant, and patient God is with you? Does this, not mean, does this mean nothing to you? Can't you see that his kindness is intended to turn you from your sin? The fact that God is slow to anger in regards to our sin 
and his desire for us to know him, it's the most important thing that I could say is that we all need to be forgiven and God is slow in his return so we can accept him as our Lord and Savior. I'm going to ask everyone to bow your head and close your eyes. If you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior today, if you are away from him or maybe you've walked away and uh, today you're coming back to him, I I just want to encourage you to slip your hand up and I want to pray with you. I'm not going to embarrass you, but if you're here, you're saying, man, that's me. I need Jesus. First service, there were two that raised their hands. Who is the Lord speaking to in this service saying, man, I need that kind of relationship. I need that forgiveness in my life. Just slip up your hand. I want to pray with you. Anyone at all? Second service? I know we got prayer warriors praying and this is the reason we're here today. If you're away from the Lord and ready to return. Okay. I don't see any hands going up. And so I just want to read one final set of verses It's actually not on the screen. I kind of added in last minute. Psalm 37. In fact, let's do this. Let's stand and prepare to worship and to kind of respond with this great song uh, that is, uh, it's it's a great song. It's nothing else. Kind of just saying, God, there's nothing else more important. Uh, Help us uh, to be still in your presence. But uh, look what, or just listen. You can close your eyes. And uh, at the end of this, Pastor Bobby, you can lead us. It says in Psalm 37, it says, Be still in the presence of the Lord. Let me say that again. Be still in the presence of the Lord. Wait patiently for Him to act. For someone here today, you've been waiting. That's, the, that's like a rhema word, a, a word that just came alive. Be patient. Wait patiently for Him to act. Don't worry about evil people who prosper or fret about their wicked schemes. Stop being angry. Turn from your rage. Do not lose your temper. It only leads to harm. And verse 9 is the last verse, and then Pastor Bobby, you can lead us. For the wicked will be destroyed, but those who trust in the Lord will possess the land. There's good things when we trust the Lord and we put our faith and our hope and our love in Him. Let's respond with this great song. Before I pray to close, uh, I just felt like God had a word in my heart for first service and maybe it's a word uh, for someone in second service as well, but uh, the word is that we are impatient whenever we're not able to be present. And uh, I don't know, maybe you're like me, but I'm someone who's always thinking of the next thing. Maybe you're sitting here in service and you're thinking of what's for lunch or you're thinking of what you're doing with your friends after this or you're not able to just sit through a service without picking up your phone and checking what's going on around you. And uh, there's this thing where it's hard to be in God's presence because it means that we're aware of what he's doing in the present moment, in the present circumstance, in this place, at this time. And uh, I just want to encourage you, the more that you spend time in God's presence, the more that it forces you to be present and be aware of what he's doing in and through you, what he's doing around you in the present moment. And if you feel like you're always thinking of what's next and what's ahead and what the next thing is, uh, you're, you're pulling away from God's presence and you're getting impatient uh, even with what he is maybe trying to do uh, where, with where, wherever you're at in the present moment. So I'm going to pray. And if that's for you, maybe just have it be a prayer for yourself. And uh, Jesus, we just thank you for the way that uh, you tied in this, this service this morning. Uh, Lord, we didn't know coming in this morning of, of Pastor Jamie's powerful testimony of this friend that she prayed for. Lord, that patience and promises are so closely tied together. Lord, even uh, one of Pastor Ben's uh, uh, texts this morning from your word, it said that you are not slow as some understand slowness. Lord, and we thank you that you're not slow with your promises. 
Lord, that you're never hurried or busy or impatient. Lord, and I think of the promises of the past that you told Abraham that he would be the father of nations and someone reminded me of that text this morning. And yet 25 years after you made that promise, you had to remind Abraham that that promise still stood because he was still waiting. That the Israelites, that they waited in the desert for 40 years, Lord. That, Lord, you gave them these Ten Commandments. You met them in a powerful way. You delivered them from slavery. And immediately after you delivered them, they worshipped an idol. And Lord, so often when people fail around us, we act like Moses, we get angry, we bash the Ten Commandments, Lord, and then you come alongside us and you say, no, the Lord, the Lord, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love is who I am, Lord, and we thank you that when we get angry with those around us, we thank you that you are slow to anger and that you are abounding in steadfast love. Lord, because we know we need it, because we let you down so often, we fail so often, we're impatient with others so often, our fruit is still growing, Lord. Lord, and we pray that we can take root in you, because it's only through your presence that we get more patient. It's only through your presence that we get more loving. Lord, and delayed promises is a chance for us to grow. A chance for us to exhibit godliness because we know that we are leaving this place and going into a world that is so impatient. A world of people who just want to take a pill to fix something, that want to just put something in a microwave, Lord, because everything is quick. That they're always thinking of what's next and they're never able to just be with people that they're so quick to shut people out of their lives. Lord, let us be people of patience, of perseverance. Lord, in a world that is in such a hurry, let us stand out for the right reasons. Lord, and we know that as we go, as we leave this place, that your presence will be before us, behind us, all around us, and especially within us. Lord, we give you all the praise and all the glory and all the honor. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for being here with us this morning. You guys can go in the grace of God. We hope you have a great weekend, and we'll see you next Sunday. Thank you for listening to this week's message from the Gateway Church. If you'd like to find out more about our church, such as service times, giving, and ways to get connected, visit us at thegateway.church.